it, I mean, it could come from like the old timey muskets where you had wad in there, and if you like knocked everything out, it could. But we may just use. I'm definitely term. talking about. everybody, I'm Mike Kazmer. We're here in Sedona, Arizona for the annual Pink Bike Field Trip. We're taking a look at a whole bunch of affordable trail bikes. Right next to me is the $2,299 YT Jeff AL Base. This bike recently received an update and now has the same geometry as its more expensive carbon siblings. This bike is available with either 29 inch or 27 5 inch wheels. We brought in the 29 inch version. It's got a 150 millimeter fork and it has 140 millimeters of rear travel. This bike has a 66 degree head tube angle and there's a flip chip that allows you to steepen that up to 66.5 degrees if you felt like it. But I have a feeling most riders are keeping that low setting, leave it alone. The reach on the size large that we have, 470 millimeters, a nice and steep 77 degree seat tube angle, and the chain stays are at 435 millimeters for the size small through large, and then XL and the XXL sizes actually have longer chain stays at 440 millimeters. YT just wanted to keep the balance of the bike feeling the same across the sizes. The Jesse uses a horse link suspension design and the shock is a RockShox Deluxe. There's no lockout or anything on there, just a simple rebound adjustment. Up front, you have a Yari RC fork, like the name implies, that has rebound and compression adjustments. We've got SRAM Guide T brakes handling the stopping duties with a 200 millimeter rotor up front, 180 millimeter rotor in the rear, and those are four piston brakes. It's nice to see more powerful brakes on a bike in the trail category. You know, a lot of people would be just fine with two piston brakes, but I'd rather have more power rather than not enough power. You also have SRAM's SX drivetrain. That gives you an 11 to 50 tooth cassette. Nice big wide range, climb up those steep hills. At this price point, it's nice to see a DT Swiss wheel set on here. In this case, the M1900. And that has a set of Maxxis Minion DHR2 tires on there. You also have ODI lock on grips, race phase cockpit. Pretty nice components, especially considering the price. There's also YT's own Postman dropper post. On the size large, that has 150 millimeters of drop. On the size XL and XXL, goes up to 170 millimeters of drop and then the smaller sizes are 125 millimeters of drop. Those are the basic details about the Jeff C AL base, but now it's time to dive into those ride impressions. We've been taking out in the Sedona desert, really seeing what this bike can handle. Let's talk about that. All right, Kaz, before we hit the trails, you got to set it up. Tell us how that went. Yep. This bike, initially I started with 30% sag in the rear, ended up dropping that down to 25% just to get a little more support. I go through the travel quite as often, um, otherwise, Pretty simple setup, kind of go off the recommended pressures that RockShox supplies, and it all worked out. Yeah, so I found the exact same thing without talking to Kaz about it. I rode it first at 30% sag and then dialed it down to 25 and it, it felt a lot better and I was right at the recommended pressure for the fork and yeah, we hit the trails and pretty straightforward. For me, this bike was a really easy bike to live with. It, there's nothing really that stands out as like, I wish this was better or I wish this was even different. Yeah, same here, whether it was that techie kind of tight, you know, wriggling through the rocks type of climbing, or we had some longer, just sort of a gravel road climbs, does well, um, not a ton of bob. Once we'd settled on that 25% sag, comfortable position all around, kind of just hits the mark of the way you want a trail bike to feel. Okay, since we don't have anything to complain about though, why don't we do some comparison talk? Jeff C versus the Hightower D. Yeah, I mean, one thing there is the weight. The Hightower is a bit heavier, I think maybe around a pound heavier, not the end of the world, but this does have a little bit livelier feel it kind of gets up and goes a little bit faster they're pretty close and mm -hmm. my fastest times were on the high tower i gotta say that but this one does feel like it just wants to kind of hop off the starting line a little quicker the jeff c for me it feels like it jumps forward with more urgency uh it feels like it fits in places better when it's really technical and slow and jumbly um yeah <laughs> yeah yeah guys <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, we're kind of giving you a sneak peek of what we'll be talking about more in our roundtable discussions by comparing this bike to the Common Saw Meta TR, as well as that Santa Cruz Hightower. When you look at it on paper, the geometry numbers, they're not radically different. I think the Hightower is 65.5 degree head angle. This is 66. It's a half degree. It's, that doesn't seem like it'd make a difference, but that Hightower does feel a little more solid on the descents. Same with the Common Saw. It's actually the same exact head angle, if not a little bit steeper but that one feels a little more solid too. Mm -hmm. And by, when we say solid, we don't mean the bike is wiggling or flexing. It's just the way the overall handling, the overall feel of the bike. The Jeff C just kind of wants to bob and weave and kind of not just plow straight down the fall line. Yeah, 
I think I'd, I'd agree with you there, Kaz. Like, it's crazy these days how a company can make a bike that is, it's just so normal and it just works decently well everywhere. Yeah. You know, it's it handles itself well on the rough descents, it handles itself well on the tight, slow descents and in the berms. It's just a really good kind of overall easy to live with geometry package for yeah. sure. And the price is really fair too. I mean, $2,300 for this thing, I mean, yeah. that's, that's impressive. So where did this bike stack up for you? For me, it was right in the middle. I got my fourth fastest time out of the eight bikes we have here on test. Uh, my actual climb time was seventh out of eighth, and then my descent time was tied for second and third. I think I made up a time on the traverse section of our test loop. So it was a little different story for me when the clock was ticking. I had my slowest loop time on this bike, Casimir. I had my slowest downhill time on this bike. <laughs> But I did have my second fastest climb time for what it's worth. Maybe I tried really hard on the climb and I had no juice left for the downhill or something. I don't think that's what happened, but anyway, clock doesn't lie, so there you go. All right, so you just spent $2,300 on your brand new bike, ride it for a little while. Is there anything you start thinking about upgrading? I probably don't have any money left over, so for me personally, no. And on this bike, there's not a whole lot that you're gonna wanna change. Maybe some things for personal preference. If I had to nitpick again, that SRAM SX shifter, I mean, it's kind of hard to reach. You can get something for 50 bucks that mounts on a matchmaker and it's easier, but like I'm really nitpicking there. Casimir, what about you? Yeah, I think for me, I'd probably swap out that seat, that STG seat that's on here. It doesn't agree with me personally. Maybe you should wear a chamois. You don't wear a chamois. No, I don't need to on most bikes. But with the right saddle, you don't need to wear a chamois and then you're good. That's but either way, that's probably too much information, but now you know. I would consider upgrading the damper in the fork eventually could swap it out, put a Charger 2.1 damper in there, get a little more performance. Not something you need to do off the bat, but the bike is so good that that's something to start considering. You can keep it for a number of seasons. Um, all right, you're probably only a little nitpick, maybe that water bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when you order your YT, you have to specify that you want to include the Fidlock bottle system on it. It's a proprietary bottle. You can't run other bottles on here. And it's a, a squat little bottle that fits down underneath the shock. You can run other Fidlock bottles. Yeah, you can't run a normal water bottle on here. Right. And besides, you need to run a Fidlock bottle that size. But proprietary means it's like just why it's, that Fidlock makes small proprietary bottles. Proprietary to Fidlock. It's a proprietary system to Fidlock. You use Fidlock system. Yeah, just make yeah. sure you make it clear that it's Fidlock. It was clear. No, but yeah, this one, I called it the Fidly Lock because you're trying to reach and ride and grab your water while you're going. It's pretty difficult. It's not easy, is it? No. Final thoughts, it's an extremely impressive value for the price and the parts kit. Can't get much better than that. The performance lives up to it as well. Good in the climbs, good in the descents, good in those little traversy sections of the trail. It's really hard to beat. Yeah, I'd agree with Casimir. It's an excellent all-rounder. It's gonna do everything you need it to. $2,300. I mean, not a lot of room left for improvement. Okay, that's it for the YT Jeffsy. We're gonna wrap this up and head out for a ride. Stay tuned for our future roundtable discussions where we're gonna pit all these value bikes against each other and talk about some strengths and weaknesses.